Hey folks, Steve here with another World in Flames video. Uh, we're looking at March and April 1941, and I already took care of reinforcements. I took care of it of, of initiative. Uh, Access one initiative. The Allies could have asked for a reroll, uh, but they want to wait until summer to do that. Um, so they would rather have. They would probably like to go first rather than the Axis here, but um, they figure it's probably better to do that in the summer than now, where. Um, if they if they use it up now, then the Axis will have initiative advantage later. So that that was my thinking. I rolled weather uh, because of a plus one from last turn. The weather was uh, I rolled an eight plus one is nine, which in uh, March April is fine everywhere except for rain in the Arctic. So um, an incredibly timid winter it is looking like, at least for the moment. We still could have some late you know some some late snows in, in spring or something here, but um, so far so good. And so this is probably the impulse that the Axis will declare war on Spain, probably. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that they're really going to want to do. I mean, while the weather is good and while they have an opportunity to, um, they will probably, you know, want to do this. So... Uh, we'll have to see, you know, what how exactly this, this all plays out. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So, yeah, um, not looking good for the Allies so far this game. Uh, again, it, it said in other videos, I think a lot of it has to do with some very poor play on my part as the Allies when it comes to the Mediterranean. Um, the, the Axis has kind of forced the Commonwealth out of the Mediterranean almost entirely. Um, they're holding on, they have a unit in Malta, but that's, you know, pretty tenuous. Uh, they still have a decent fleet in Gibraltar operating, but now we're going to start to see Spain under uh, some direct threat. And so the game is really, you know, very westward facing at the moment. Uh, and the Soviets are still trying to figure out, you know, how soon uh, can they go to war with Germany because they need to provide that distraction. Um, we also might see an invasion of Yugoslavia, just because we'd like to clear that out um, as uh, another theater uh, to, de to kind of help defense so that we don't get cut off somewhere over in the east with the Soviets coming across the border someday. Um, I'm not sure it's a huge deal to take Yugoslavia, but I, it seems like uh, an opportunity to try and and do it. Um, because the main thing is, like with, with Yugoslavia, as we look at that, and this is probably a thing just worth talking about in general, we need to take the factory hexes, right? And there's really two. Uh, there's uh, Belgrade and there's Zagreb. And both of those uh, are in flat terrain, or, or basically not mountains. You know, there's forest, but that's not as big of a deal. And we have units in the north, so really, like, we have a great position to come down from the north seize the, the important cities um, with the factories, and then we'll have conquered Yugoslavia. Um, there's some mountains that could pose a problem, but that's not, you know, they're not really in the way of all the forces that we would deploy uh, in this theater. So I'd have to go look at the Yugoslavian force pool and see, you know, what it shakes out to look like here in 41, but it certainly seems like it's worthwhile to try. So, um... With that in mind, we got to look at Spain, and Spain is, you know, a similar situation where there's just a few key hexes, but they're going to be a lot harder to take. So, obviously, we have Gibraltar down here, and the Allies have a, the ability, uh, once we declare war on Spain, they're going to align with the Commonwealth, likely, right? And then what's going to happen is uh, the Commonwealth's going to be able to come into uh, the country. So they're going to help, you know, defend Spain effectively. Um, now, we don't want to come out of Gibraltar too much. We don't want to open up ourselves to a naval invasion of Gibraltar, but we do have, you know, ports that we could send guys down to help. Now, where we're probably going to find an issue with that is that the Germans are prepping for sea lion activities, and that will occur, and that will cause problems, obviously, to the point where you know, the, the Commonwealth's not going to be able to send guys into Spain, really. Um, and if and again, if they weaken Gibraltar, they're opening themselves up for, for pain and suffering there. Um, the interesting thing is, 
uh, because of the sea connections, um, the Bay of Biscay ends up becoming important because it's going to allow uh, basically the, the Bay of Biscay to provide supply through these Spanish ports down to Gibraltar. So even if we got like down over here off camera and had Gibraltar surrounded using naval bombers and different things, um, supply is going to be much harder to disrupt until we have cut deep into Spain. Now to conquer Spain, uh, now they have four resources you can see you know, scattered about. They're not, you know, we don't worry too much about them because right now the Axis doesn't really need extra resources, at least for the moment. But to conquer Spain proper, we need to take uh, Bilbao, Bilbao, I'm not sure how to pronounce that right, Barcelona, and Madrid. Those are the factory hexes that need to be taken. Um, two of those are right near the border. So you figure, um, assuming we're able to get across the Pyrenees, which I'm not even sure how well this is going to go. It could be a complete disaster. I might end up closing the game up early because if we really screw up the uh, the invasion of Spain, I mean, that could throw this whole game off course. And it, going through all of this is making me really appreciate why most games just do 41 Barbarossa because it's just much more straightforward. You're not, like, this is wildly risky, it feels like to me, because of all this mountainous terrain. Mountain, mountainous terrain is going to double the defender's combat value. And when, when you talk about those doubling, I mean, even with a bunch of strong German units, you just can't get great odds. Um, I mean, we're going to have air superiority, but it's still going to be tough. Uh, but we're going to try to get across the mountains. We're going to get these factory hexes. Uh, and then from there, we get some flat, you know, areas. Um, and then Madrid is in a flat hex, a clear hex, I should say. But it does have mountains around it. So the Spanish, you know, depending on how the battles at the Pyrenees go, could still end up with maybe a tight defense around Madrid and keeping that, you know, uh, a fortress to keep the fall of Spain from happening. So it, it's going to be an interesting thing. Just where do we go? How far can we get? The other thing I have is there's a port down there at uh, Cartagena that maybe we send a marine down there, right? And we take that port, then we could transport an HQ, and then we could come from the south and get Madrid. So that, and that would probably be an Italian-driven activity. So it might force the Commonwealth to come over here. Uh, we would exit, you know, and work our way up this way. So that, you know, Germans down here, Italians up there, and we just sort of do a kind of a pincer and take the critical spots. And, and the camera screwed up, of course it did as I'm mid-sentence, um, you know, taking care of all this here in the Iberian Peninsula will make it harder for the Allies to get in to here, even with the U.S.'s support. So we are on a timer uh, as the Axis. We're still kind of behind where I would have wanted to be. Maybe I should have, you know, with, I didn't know the winter was going to be so good. Maybe I should have declared in the winter and, and had operated very well earlier. We might have made some progress. You can see uh, that dotted blue line is the weather zone separation. So above it, north of it, is still north temperate, which means more likely to get snow, storm, rain, etc. Once we get below the line, we're in the Mediterranean uh, sea, uh, weather zone, I should say. Um, and that will tend to be a little bit better, generally speaking, for uh, warfare. So you know, that this this up here, this band of uh, hexes is really going to be the tough nut to crack. If we can crack it, um, then, you know, we'll be in okay shape. The, the Spanish army, um, which I believe these are the Spanish nationalists, right? So this is, not, you know, we didn't do any weird Spanish Civil War stuff. It's the pink nationalist Spain units that will be put on the board. They, they actually have a decent-sized army, um, and I can set them up in the mountains. And so it, it, this is not going to be a simple thing. The only questions will be, do I garrison a port like Cartagena? Do I put anything in Madrid? Do I try to stuff everything up here? The other thing that matters is that... If I can get this... Oh, the camera. There we go. The other thing i got to watch out for are the alpine hex sides. So just as an example, these are alpine hex sides. They've got the white line right by the border. You can't come across these unless you have a mountain, unless you are a mountain unit, and even then, it's a, it's too much of a pain to do it. So these guys being in this hex are really only good to go here, right? And 
Likewise, there is a mountain pass right here between these two hexes, but I can't do, you know, this hex and this hex attack this hex. So I'm not going to make it through here. Not likely. Same thing over here. Um, same thing over here. <laughs> so it's really going to be like the, the most that I can count on. And maybe I should change my unit units up here a little bit is to get into these you know it's the ends so here and here are where the fewest alpine hex sides are that's where I'm gonna make my gains um, so I don't know it's kinda tough and yeah I'm looking at it now I'm like oh I probably put some units in the wrong place and I probably don't have enough time to change it for it to matter in any upcoming combats. So yeah, I don't know. This is kind of a tough thing that I've got to look at and decide how we want to proceed. You know, do we go into Yugoslavia? Do we go into Spain? And, and the other, finally, the other tricky bit is, when do I try to get into the Commonwealth? You know, how soon do I try to make a landing? Because if it's good weather now, um, I, I can try. I can start to, you know, contest the waters around the Commonwealth and see what happens. But to do that, Will, will cost me activity limits. And if I'm going to war with Yugoslavia, Spain, and trying to do Sea Lion, I can't do everything. So this is definitely the tricky bit of going with this ahistorical path. I've got to figure out where exactly I'm going and what I'm going to do it with and how soon do we operate. And all that is tricky business. Um, all tricky business. So uh, I'm going to... It is the Axis impulse, but I'm going to take some time off camera and kind of think through some of this stuff, I got to look at the garrison values over here and figure out how close we are to having a war break out if the Soviets want it. Um, and okay, so what's interesting, I just worked out the garrison values over here. So the Soviet offensive garrison value is like 27, I think I worked it out to be. Well, the German defensive uh, right now is like 42. So right now, just as is, um, it is going to be very hard for the Soviets to break the neutrality pact. You need to have double offensive garrison value to your opponent's defensive garrison value. Now over time, some of that German stuff will, will go down. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's going to be very difficult to see. Um, And I'm trying to see... If your total is at least double that of the other major power, you may break the pact, but... When you want to break a neutrality pact, you increase your garrison value by the value of your offensive entry markers, but you can't more than double your garrison value. Oh, I see. So that means... I'm just looking at the rules. So you can't, like, super compensate for... Um, That's interesting. So I can't, it's almost like round support. <laughs> so I need to look at this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it's actually a lot closer than I thought because while I have a whole bunch of defensive markers for the Germans, I can't, like I have more entry markers for defense than I have units garrison value. So it's really 27 to 30. Um, so I wasted some entry chits there, and maybe the Allies would have perked up had they been paying more attention there, I guess. I, I didn't bluff myself as well as I thought, who knows. Um, but it still means the Soviets aren't looking at being able to break the garrison. Uh, my camera screwed up. To complete my thought there, we probably will not see the Soviet Union be able to declare war on Germany until late 1941, at the earliest, probably not until 1942. That's likely what the situation will be. So we'll, we'll have to see how this plays out. Um, yeah. In looking at the Yugoslavian force pool and what could go in here, um, there'd certainly be some decent units. 
uh, that you know compared to what's around it. So all the Axis units over here are all pretty weak. They're kind of the weaker units. They're Hungarian units. I've got a couple of German units that I've added to the mix, but they're not incredibly powerful. Um, and so it, it could actually, a Yugoslavian adventure could go poorly, um, potentially, but it just depends on what else comes about. And, and as I look at, you know, other reinforcements coming in for the Axis, I mean, we could toss in some units, I guess, if things weren't going well. But let's, maybe we'll see, maybe we'll wait until summer for Yugoslavia. Um, we need to get Spain going because that's going to take longer. It shouldn't take as long to take Yugoslavia once we declare war on it. We can maybe wait until May, June, or July, August to try for Yugoslavia and knock it out quickly, you know, later on, assuming we have the power to do so. Probably seems better because Yugoslavia is not critical compared to the critical things, which are Spain in the UK, obviously. So that's the Axis thought process here as we get underway. Um, and yeah, we'll consider what what else we want to do there uh, as we go. And we'll say, um, okay, the Axis has declared war on Spain, and we have done the setup here, so the Spanish fleet is setting up here in Barcelona, uh, just because it realizing that this is now an Allied fleet addition uh, that could be used to help fight off the Italians. So there's that. Um, though they are in danger, you know, they could be overrun, but, I, you know, I don't know. I did put a transport up in the northeast in Galicia because we could try to use that transport to bring Commonwealth units down or at least escape with the transport. I did put uh, a garrison here in Madrid and a garrison in Cartagena, just thinking, okay, that's we want to kind of protect um, the, the weaker bits uh, as we can, but we do have the majority of our forces here in uh, the Pyrenees. You can even see that I left a hex empty because I don't, I don't need to put a unit there right now. There's no way for those units to get across, and the mountain units of the Germans are up, you know, looking to be air transported to the UK, so not really in danger of an issue there, but Everything else is, you know, it, in some places one unit per hex, um, in some critical spots doubled up, but you got to remember that the mountains are doubling combat factors. So even this is really for combat um, and is maybe the weakest point in the line, and I'm just not sure if there's anything else I can do to improve that. Um, just the reality is there's just not that many great, great units to put there, and I'd rather... Well, I don't know. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Anywhere that could have two Axis hexes attacking one hex, I need to put the stronger units. This being a one hex to one hex, the cav there uh, with a two strength double to four is going to have to do. That's probably the weakest point in the line, though. Uh, but they have the HQ nearby uh, that can help. Um, maybe I can shuffle it back and forth as needed. But it's a, this is about as good of a defense for Spain as I can make. Uh, in the given situation. But you can see they have just the one fighter, not even a great fighter. It does have some ground support strength that we could use as the uh, as the allies, um, but it will simply be overwhelmed by the dedicated air force that the Axis has put into the field here um, to go. So yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Technically, uh, there's additional resources that can go to the Commonwealth and, and the factories used. I did align Spain with the Commonwealth, um, but what we're probably going to end up having happen is, um, uh, because I don't think there's any Spanish, uh, well, I, I, I'm going to have to look, it doesn't really matter for me, I'm going to have to decide, will destroyed Spanish units go into the Commonwealth force pool or not? I'm really not sure that it matters very much, uh, whether or not they do or don't, just, it dilutes the force pool a little bit if I want to build things, but if Spain is conquered, um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I might just let them go. But I guess I don't really have to... I have to decide that now, but I'm playing myself, so I don't really care. Um, I might let them just go away, because Spain's probably going to get overrun. It might not really matter. Um, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. But, yeah. So we're going to get into the uh, the Axis stuff. Um, I think at this point... it 
probably not surprising to say that we'll have Germany at least do a land, um, and then Italy mm, might have to do a combined, if only to get some units shuffled around here. So we'll take a look at uh, just what happens with that. Okay, uh, with the Italian combined and the German land, uh, we've got situated down here an attack that will probably occur next in Pulse, if I'm lucky. I Probably will be a couple impulses here, but at least we're contesting North Africa. Uh, up in the critical zone, you can see there's some stuff in the dead pile up here. Um, we broke the line um, in exactly the places we thought it, they might. Uh, so Axis air missions were pretty successful. We didn't destroy the Spanish air, but we did abort it. Um, and so we ended up losing both Italian Corps in an attack uh, over here. These were all really dicey rolls, and, and I took some risks here, but they paid off okay. So we were able to come around down a little bit. We were able to knock out that cavalry, but we, we I think, lost a unit there. Um, and I'm basically too afraid to advance, because we would be... Um, eh. Well, I don't know. With the Alpine hexes being the way that they would be... Um, I guess that might knock them out of supply if I did, but they'd be flipped. I think we're okay. I think, I, I, well, mm. I, I forget the way Alpine hex sides really work. Um, I don't know if Zox cross the Alpine hex sides or not. So, I, I don't know. I'm not going to advance that guy, but we did have two hex on one here. Was able to flip that uh, with the good bombers we have. And, uh, yeah, the surprise helped a lot. Um, oh, gosh! You know what I just realized as I'm saying this? Because I rolled... Because it was surprise, I shouldn't have even been able to fly this guy. So I wonder how much of a difference that would have meant. I guess it had I known that, we just need to make it like this, basically. That the fighters wouldn't have been used at all. Um, yeah, I guess that's... Hmm. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that would have mattered there, but... Um, I forgot about the surprise, so I guess that technically gives the these guys some of their planes back but that really helps the Spanish more than anything um, but I'd say the real the real key point of this is now that the Pyrenee line is is heavily broken three Spanish units lost for three Axis units which is kinda you know I mean I guess okay for the Spanish but they don't really have you know much else to go on here um, and they're gonna be hurting from here on out um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. We only had the one HQ down here, and I flipped them to flip these guys. I think maybe what I should have done... Well, no, I guess that makes sense. I mean, it, I don't know. This is kind of tough. It's kind of a weird situation. Like, what what units, you know, can we make use of uh, to do the things that we need to do? Um, but this will give the Spanish an opportunity to retreat back into some of the cities like Barcelona and, and Bilbao, but um, the Pyrenees are kind of in a tenuous position. The Axis still have units that have not been flipped, and that's really going to be the key thing here, is can they keep pushing and progressing? Because once these guys get knocked out, I mean, it's going to be all downhill from here uh, in terms of getting into Madrid. There's not going to be much that the uh, Allies can do to stop what's going to happen, um, is kind of the way I see it. Uh, but I think that is it for the Axis Impulse, so we're going to go over to the Allies, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so <laughs> I'm in such a precarious position, so I, I ended up, I, I got ahead of myself, and I had the Commonwealth do a whole bunch of naval moves, as if the Commonwealth had done a naval action. And then I realized, and, and you can see I even have, like, an a the Allied fleet consisting of Spanish ships, French ships, 
uh, Commonwealth ships entering the Western Med for a climactic naval battle. But then I realized, okay, well, if I did all of those naval moves, which I have already done, that means I don't have enough... I can't, like, go back and say, oh, wait, no, I, do it, I did a combined to move these Spanish units. And then I was going to have to move everybody back, and I didn't want to do that. But here's the problem. That means I don't move the Spanish units. And if I had reverse time, and I said, no, 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 Commonwealth's going to do a land because we need to re align the Spanish line, that means that's a, that's, I'm missing out on the naval moves that the Commonwealth wants to do, and I'll tell you why they're doing it. They sent out the Scapa Flow fleet to the North Sea because they feel like now is the time that the Germans are going to try a landing. And I, I sort of off-camera had to decide something because that is what I, the Axis side of my brain was going to do. I can't outthink myself, so I rolled a die. I said, okay, here's 50-50 chance. I rolled a die, and, and if so, then the Commonwealth would send out the fleet preemptively expecting to roadblock the Germans from, from really trying something up here. Now, they, the Germans still can, mind you. It doesn't matter that the fleet is there. It's just the fleet is so strong that they're going to take a big risk because ordinarily, you know, maybe we'd want to have done that during the first impulse before the, the Commonwealth fleet was out, but we wanted to do the land thing instead. And so, yeah, that's the whole... That's the whole difficulty here. We have a land war in Iberia. We have a combined arms battle to come for Sea Lion. And picking one or the other just due to the activity limits is very difficult. Now, if I was playing the Deluxe game, I could spend offensive points. Or not the Deluxe game, gosh. If I were playing with options, I could spend offensive points to do a combined, super combined, uh action. But I'm not playing with O points. <laughs> so this makes the sort of like the restriction on what you can do and how much of it you can do in one turn or one impulse even greater. Um, but the thing is, we, we now have all the Commonwealth allied ships out um, to just about the best that I can manage. I do have a French transport heading down to South Africa because there is an Indian uh, mechanized corps that reinforced into South Africa, and I have to bring him up um, to, to get him into the fight somewhere. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, we don't have a lot of options. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go with the naval. Whatever happens with Spain because of this, we're just going to have to eat, eat it. Um, fortunately, I don't think it puts us in a huge, huge, huge amount of danger. Um, mostly because the Germans still have to deal with supply issues uh, as well as trying to snake around Zox. So not moving the land units in Spain, we can maybe afford to do it to make sure the Navy's out. And the important thing is we're going to try to punch the Italian Navy pretty hard in the face because the Italians still have uh, some ships in port that they didn't send out um, because we didn't have... Um, we didn't do the, the naval thing. We did land stuff or combined stuff before. And uh, all the Italian stuff that was out here was there from the previous turn. So there's a, the Allies have a naval advantage in the Med right this second. So we're going to roll some dice. First thing I'm going to do, just to get it over with, is I'm going to try to search in the Italian coast. And we'll roll a dice for this. Uh, and I rolled a 1. <laughs> for the Italians, I rolled a 9 for the Commonwealth, um, so neither find each other, and that season is done. We had a ship in the zero box, but that doesn't really do anything for us. Now we're going to roll probably the more important roll, which is this. And I'd say at the moment the Commonwealth probably has the advantage, and even though the Italians do have a fighter out here to support their naval bomber, um, if the Commonwealth can find them, they're going to have an air advantage. Their, their aircraft carriers are simply in a better position. So we will roll the dice, and we will see what happens. Um, okay, that is a miss for both. So uh, the Allies simply do not have the search. They rolled a five. I might need to double check. If there's any modifiers that's, that help them here. There might be something. Uh, 
let's see, plus one. Oh, our, our aircraft carriers are not quite good enough to give us a bonus. Yeah, so dang. Um, so we'll flip a Spanish ship here for the search, and they failed. So they did not find the Axis. This was kind of a critical roll. They just barely missed it. If they had rolled a four, um, that would have been in, and they could have picked something like uh, the three box or something and really beaten up the Italians, but they failed. So this was kind of an important die roll. They didn't get it. Um, a bit of a worrying situation for the Allies. Um, but not much more we could do there. So they're going to have it go back to the Axis, and we'll roll for weather. Let me see if there's anything else that they could have done. I mean, I just I don't see a whole lot more that they could have done. Yeah, so roll for weather and four. I don't believe that's a plus on anything. And we are in March, April. Is oh okay. So here's where the weather turns bad for us. We have snow. In the Arctic, we have a storm in the North Temperate, rain in the Med, fine storm rain. Okay, and the rest of these don't really matter because we're not dealing with the monsoon regions really. But Okay, so now the weather has turned bad, um, and that will begin to have a little bit of an impact just on what's going to be going on here. Now, we'll have to see... Um, I'll go off camera and, and we'll figure out what it is the Axis want to do here. i got to think through it because the weather now kind of has a big impact on what we can do and why we would do it. Well, um, Axis couldn't do a whole lot. We did some combined stuff as the Italians. We did get the rest of the fleet out. Um, the uh, Allies tried to find and they failed again here. Uh, the Germans did do a combined also and they... Um, sent uh, some guys through here. The, the storm really kind of slowed these guys down, so they could only move a little tiny bit, um, but the Alpine hexes don't allow Zox, so we were kind of like, these guys are actually out of supply right now. Technically, so are these guys, because we're covering that city with a Zox. Um, and of course, this guy's in supply, being in the city itself, but uh, we're sort of working our way down. It's kind of tough. I realize, like, we it, it took a lot of steam to get across the Pyrenees. Now it's just going to be a harder time uh, kind of getting our way through. Um, so that's going to be the one challenge as we go through here. Uh, so the only thing that we really have left to roll um, are going to be uh, a search roll because the Germans did send subs out all the way out here. Um, and because they only had the one naval move, uh, I had to put the subs in the lower sea box. So we'll see what we get. Uh, and we both missed, uh, so that's a shrug and a miss for that. So going back to the Allies, um, I'll decide what the Allies are going to do. Uh, well, the Allied move was very simple. The French finished sending a transport to South Africa, which will have to wait till next turn to bring uh, the Indian unit back. Um, the Commonwealth did a land purely for the sake of the Spanish so that they could move to get back into supply, though they do flip. Uh, but there's pretty much no way to have them lose supply status now. So um, they have been kind of pushed off the Pyrenees. Uh, that is the reality uh, for the most part. But uh, the Axis don't have that many options. They have to wait till the weather clears, basically. Um, and I think that's as far as we could really get. Uh, I didn't I didn't start the fracas up here because the stormy, stormy weather is so bad that the planes really aren't doing much. You know, they can't do much anyway. So it's really almost a quiet turn so far. Um, going uh, back to... Oh, I see. And I forgot. So this should have gone one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So this, the weather has affected how short the turn is going to be by a lot. I'm going to roll new weather. I rolled an 8, which is rain in the Arctic, fine everywhere else. And so now is the time the Axis needs to, to move and move swiftly. So I'll take care. With a fine weather now, the Axis can take 
a lot more actions that are worthwhile, so we'll see what they decide to do here. Okay, with the Axis play, uh, we actually rolled very well with the Ground Strike. We're able to clear this hex with the help of Ground Support, or Reshore Bombardment, I should say, from out here. Um, <clears throat> I was then able to also crack through uh, the Lowlands here in Spain. Now, they still have plenty of power covered in these mountain hexes with the factories, but we've broken the power of the Spanish, basically. I mean, it, it, there's stuff that we're going to need to figure out um, in the next turn because I'm out of gas already down here. But again, I have mostly cracked them open in this turn. Um, what good weather we've had has allowed us to really bust things open. Um, and so I think we're good there. I, I don't see anything else that I can do, so we're going to roll the dice, see if we end the turn. And we do not, so it shifts two boxes to the Allies. Um, and the Allies are kind of in a tough position. They can't uh, do much more. A lot of these guys are flipped. Um, they can try to do some... Let's see, you know, the French don't have anything to do. They basically lost everything. So the British can go, I guess, do naval stuff. So we can search here. So we'll flip another unit. Uh, I guess actually we could have the French do the flip here. It doesn't really matter. Oops. This thing sort of went off, went off map here, and I just knocked a bunch of stuff all over the place. Oh man, that sucks. Uh, Okay, I've got to put some ships back where they were. Um, okay, we're, we'll let's. Okay, we'll roll. We'll roll again here. Uh, and no, no finding. Okay, so that sucks for the allies. Uh, and hmm, that's it. All right, they're gonna roll to see if they end it. Uh, and that was a cocked die. Roll again, and it doesn't end. So the Axis get one more, um, but what's going to happen is the Allies are going to get an initiative bonus if the Axis uh, end it, which they probably will. Um, so I don't know which more they what more they can really do. Um, let's see. Well, I guess I could do um, capture this port. Move these guys there. Move these guys here. Let's see, they would have 16 plus allied shore bombardment. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Oh, I forgot to mention, so the last, in, last Axis Impulse, there was a battle off Cape uh, St. Vincent, and the uh, Allies actually had a string of good luck. Their aircraft carrier caught the subs and actually damaged both Italian subs, so they're in the repair pool. That's what you can see right over there. Um, dang, wow, what, what else to do here? Um, I guess 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, Doing some rebases. Um, not much else I want to do. Okay, I rolled a five, so the turn does end, which means the uh, allies now have a plus two to the initiative die roll, which uh, isn't going to be great for the uh, access to deal with, unfortunately. So um, there you go, March, April 1941. Uh, we'll probably run through everything very quickly. Um, so what I'll do is I will go off camera and take care of a lot of the intern stuff and then we'll come back. Okay, things are cooking up to be really interesting. Um, the Allies actually feel pretty good that if they get to go first at the beginning of May-June, they can cause a lot of pain for the Axis, uh, mostly having to do with screwing up the Mediterranean. Um, Spain is kind of hurting, uh, and I decided as the Commonwealth, you know, retroactively, basically, to not have the Spanish units go into the Commonwealth Force Pool. 
And the reason why I'm going to do that is because um, there, are, there are Spanish minor countries out there in Africa, um, and what the Commonwealth does not want to have to deal with is pulling Spanish units out to be built and having them way far away over here uh, and not really helping the war effort, because Spain's going to fall. That, that's what's going to happen eventually, and it just doesn't make sense um, for those units to clog up the Commonwealth force pool. So we are letting those guys die off. That's the best we can do. So in terms of actual production, we've got a lot going on. Um, because of the, uh, what do you call it, um, production multipliers increasing, I think I forgot to do that last turn. Um, and I, I forgot to use the new production multipliers, but I'm not going to go back and fix it. it. It hurt everybody that I forgot to do that, so no big deal. We use the rest of our uh, destroyer discount to start a bunch of surface ships. Um, and as the Commonwealth, we're also building more fighters, especially a 1941 fighter set, along with the motorized infantry that had a greatest chance of being in the UK. It was, so this is good for the UK in general. French aren't building anything, they have no build points. Um, I guess I could be lending them build points, but I'm not really sure it makes sense to at this point. The uh, Russians are building fighters, infantry, infantry, and um, an HQ. So they're just building what they can. Americans are building a mechanized core, uh, made sense with their five build points to go with that. Um, Italians are repairing the subs that were damaged, as well as rebuilding the units that were lost, so the mountain unit and an infantry unit. It's really the best thing they can build right now. Um, I was trying to see if there's any more aircraft worth building. And, and there is, it's just... Uh, I don't know. Um, we'll worry about building them later, I guess, but I want to get some of these infantry units back on the board, because the, 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 it, it, the Italians just don't have much in the way of infantry. But speaking of, the Germans are kind of going hog wild because they have like 30 production this turn, um, minus two build points to the Soviets, but they're building infantry, 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 whoop, another paratrooper, and the Manstein Armor HQ. So, um, Germany's getting a lot of build points uh, and really kind of needs them because they need to get some more stuff on the board. They need to get some more infantry to replenish losses they may take in Spain, to replenish losses they'll take in Sea Lion, and they need to build guys that are going to be on the Eastern Front preparing for whatever nastiness comes up with the uh, Communists. So, that's the, uh, that's the builds. I'll spread these guys out amongst the uh, production circle here in a minute. Um, the peace phase... There's really not much here to talk about. Um, the Allies didn't try hard enough. They didn't bother putting any of their units in Spain to get the bonus U.S. entry for that, just because it, it the amount of you know risk that they put in there just it didn't make sense to try. Maybe I should have done it. I, I don't know. Not too worried about it. We know the U.S. is going to be in the game here in just a few more turns. So you know what, whatever happens happens. Uh, the Soviets didn't really do anything. This is very boring for them. They shuffled some units around this turn. I didn't even show that on camera because there's nothing to show. Um, the Italians still have a bunch of units in Egypt that are basically useless. But now that we have our transports for the Italians back flipped uh, due to the reorg, we'll try to bring them you know, more to the front. I realize you guys are watching the production circle, but I'm not talking about anything super scary at the moment. Um... So, yeah, we'll have to see uh, just what happens here when we get back to uh, the next turn. But I think that'll do it for this one. So, like I said, I'm going to take care of the production circle stuff. Then we'll get into uh, handling, you know, I'll probably do it off camera, but the reinforcements for May, June. Um, and we'll come in for, you know, what should be the beginning of the summer turn. So Spain will continue to be walloped. Um, the only thing slowing them down now is just, you know, kind of getting getting their gears going. They got to take uh, Balbao, and they need to take Barcelona. Madrid is kind of nearby and open, but um, getting there is going to be, you know, getting there in supply and having enough force there is going to be the tricky bit. Uh, so we'll see what happens, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.